And so let's get started. And we're going to be talking about herbs in the beginning. Herbs will provide us, I think, I love herbs in the garden. They're just amazing fragrance. It just gets high on those, stick that basil in your nose, get high on those wonderful herbs. And they give great flavors to our, um, to our foods. So let's learn about herbs. Let's learn about how to grow them, how to preserve them, and how to cook them. And for that, we have Jackie Buckley. Jackie is the Morton County Agriculture Agent for NDSU. Let's welcome Jackie to the forum. Thank you, Tom. And I had a beautiful drive into Fargo this afternoon. And um, for those of you, um, I have several recipes. And so please feel free to try any of those. Um, I like to cook with herbs as well. And so it's fun to do. Um, also, it is really a lot of fun because then you can cut down on especially your sodium use by using more flavorful herbs in your diet. And so it's really a lot of fun. And herbs, um, like Esther talked last night as I was listening, they can add a lot of diversity to your garden and your landscape. And so they can add color texture, size, and shapes. And so we're going to talk a lot about that as we go along. Um, like with um, herbs tend to, they, use, they like adequate light and fertilizer. Um, they can be grown in the container in the garden. And I know Esther talked about um, in, in the container last night just a little bit. Um, and they really like our long daylight hours, which is really nice. Um, urban spice storage, they, you need to, of course, keep them away from moisture. Um, and then, you know what, I'm just as guilty as everybody else is that my herbs are very close to my stove because we're handy and we, they, we can easily reach them. And those of us that are a little more vertically challenged, like me, we want to make sure that we can keep them handy. But we should not be storing them there because that deteriorates that flavor um, with the heat that they're exposed to. And especially paprika, red pepper, and chili powder, probably in our summertime heat, we should consider storing that um, in, in the refrigerator. Um, some, a little few things about herb preservation before we get into talking about each individual herb. Um, you can do air drying, oven, microwave, or you can freeze them. And so um, we'll talk about those very briefly. Air drying can be done um, very easily if you like, um, you want to pick them. Of course, with any type of herb preservation, we're going to want to pick them before they flower. Um, and Esther talked about that last night, how important it is not to let those herbs go to flower before you use them, either picked fresh or if you're going to preserve them in some way. And so you want to wash them, tie them up with a string, and hang them in some way. Um, I had an aunt that had some roses um, in her, in, at a funeral she attended, and she just brought these roses in, tied them together, and hung them from the bottom of her lamp. Um, and so with herbs, you can do that as well. As you can see on the picture, um, for those of you at home as well, that they're just hung um, uh, from a wall. I've seen them from lampshades. Um, I had a, found a picture uh, with hanging them from a, a, a clothes hanger and just hanging them over that and let them dry that way. So that's some type of ideas that you can use for air drying your herbs. You want to do about two weeks to make sure that they're good and dried. And that's the main thing with when you're drying herbs in some way, you want to make sure that they're good and dry because if you put them in a closed container, we don't want them to mold and if there's extra moisture in there. Oven or dehydrator, and some of you may have a dehydrator at home, and so you want to follow the label directions that you have with your dehydrator. Um, with an oven, um, and those of us that have digital ovens nowadays, it's easy to set our oven at a really low temperature. Um, before I move, uh, before our, when I moved into my new house now, we didn't have an oven like that, and now I can set my oven for as low as I want it to go, and so we can use that. And they want it at about 100 degrees. And so when we used to have those ovens with just a little dial on there from 200 to 500, it was pretty hard to dry herbs in an oven. And so it was probably easier just to air dry them as well. And so you want to test them hourly to make sure that they don't burn on you and you have to watch so they don't burn on you as well. A microwave, uh, place bunches between the two towels. 
Microwave and high for one to three minutes. You want to check every 30 seconds. And this really seems a lot, a lot of work to me. You know, every 30 seconds, you got to go in there and check them. And so I guess I think I maybe would want to try and find something a little bit different. Um, you want to cool them and test to see that if they're brittle. If they're not, then you would put them back in the microwave and put them in for another 30 seconds and so on until you figure out that they're pretty dry um, and ready to store. Freezing, I think the easiest way to freeze herbs is to stick them, and I don't know, not many of us have ice cube trays at home anymore um, because we all have automatic automatic ice makers, but if you have an autom uh, ice cube tray, stick your herb in there, fill it with water, and stick them in your freezer and freeze them. And I think Esther mentioned this last, last night as well, that you can use it, put them in soups, um, if you like a margarita, or something like that, you could put it in there, um, in tea, um, something like that would be really nice. And as you can see that they really maintain their color really well when they're frozen in water, much like when we keep our fish frozen in water, it'll keep much fresher. Of course, we won't, they won't have that nice crisp um, texture, but at least they'll have the flavor that will still be there. And so we can just pop those um, ice cubes into soups or however we want to use them and they'll be, add some really good flavor to a lot of our, um, our, our dishes that we serve. Okay, storage life. Um, okay, when we're seas our seasoning type, um, our whole seasoning, um, two to five years, they'll keep really nicely if we keep them at the right temperature and if they're in a good sealed container. Um, ground spices, six months to two years. Leafy herbs, three months to two years. And so, that's a long time. Um, I guess I found that they lose their color and they also lose a lot of their flavor by the end of the two years. And so you might want to um, keep them a lot less time than that. Our dehydrated vegetables, about six months. Okay, here this chart is probably too small for many of you to see on the home audience, but you should have the handouts printed. And it, what this does is it gives you uh, many of the herbs that um, we can grow here in our gardens in North Dakota. The second column is whether they are an annual or a perennial or a biennial in our gardens. And then also some comments as to what these um, herbs can be used for and what type of dishes that they that they're, can be used for. And those of you that are here, um, and Tom knows that usually when I give this talk, I usually have dishes to share. And today I don't since I came, but I make, I usually make a fresh salsa, um, some, and a fruit salsa, and some other things to share with my audience, but today I didn't have an opportunity, so sorry, um, not to disappoint you. Okay, how much should I use? And as we know, um, with fresh herbs we have to use more, a lot more, as compared to if we're going to use the powdered or the dried. Um, and so two teaspoons for fresh, three quarters equals three te quarters teaspoon for dried, and a quarter teaspoon for powdered herbs. Um, and of course our stronger flavored herbs, which my husband hates bay leaves, so I don't use a lot of bay leaves. He doesn't care for it. And so um, I sneak it in on my borscht soup every once in a while, but I make sure I take it out before I serve it so he doesn't get to see it. Um, and then I, none, neither one of us are big sage lovers, and so we really be, we're really scant on our sage use as well. Some of our moderately favored herb, flavored herbs are basil, mint, marjoram, oregano, and those are really nice to use, and of course, in a lot of our Italian dishes, um, mild flavored chives and parsley. Um, and dill to me is very mild flavored. Um, I'm, of, I'm of Ukrainian descent. And so we put it in our breads, we use it on our fish, and so we use a lot of dill in our cooking, and so it's something that um, we really like to use. And my husband's gotten used to that as well. Um, now we'll get into talking about some of the, the herbs, um, the anise hyssop. And of course, as the name implies, anise is probably more of a licorice flavored herb. Um, it's a sweetener for teas and infusions. Um, it likes sun. And okay, and it's a mint family, so it probably will be kind of invasive. The mints can tend to be naughty when you get them in the garden, as many of you probably know. And also that when you feel a mint, um, they will always have a square stem. And so the mints 
experiments, those type of things, if you pick them and if you try to roll them in your, in your thing, between two fingers, um, they will not roll because they have a four-sided stem. And now that's something that you can use as, a, a, as an identification piece as well. Um, the flowers of this plant are attractive to bees and butterflies and hummingbirds. And so if we want this plant in our garden to attract for our pollinators, um, this would be a good choice. This is kind of what it looks like. It's very green and leafy, has a spiky kind of a purplish flower. Um, anise hyssop is good in cookies. Those of you that like the uh, peppernoose, um, that you might want to use some of that. Um, cakes, spreads, candy, beverages, pickles, soups, beef stew, and also fish. Basil is one of my favorites. And um, Esther made sure, she t I talked to Esther this morning, and she said to make sure to mention that basil may have a um, problem with powdery mildew in our gardens in North Dakota, so you'll want to make sure you're aware of that. And if you do find it, please let your extension agent know, because we want to do some tracking as to where it happens. I guess if it's in a nice, sunny location where there's a lot of air movement, we probably won't have a problem with it. But um, if there's, it's in shade or a shady area, we'll want to make sure that we check for that. Um, basil um, likes warm temperatures, and so we won't want to put it outside um, before it's really 60 degrees. And of course, it comes in many different sizes and shapes and colors. And we were talking last night in Mandan with, um, with one of my uh, uh, people that was attending, and there's a chocolate basil. And so those of us that are chocolate lovers, um, try that one. It's, it's good. And of course, basil goes with a lot of our pastas, once again, um, and pestos and that sort of type of thing. And it really has a nice flavor, eggs, cheese, however you would like to use it. Um, I kind of covered this. There's a sweet basil, holy basil, red Reuben basil, as we talked about. And it also can be used as an ornamental. And as with all the other herbs, um, basil, make sure that you pick it before it bolts and flowers. Those of you that like a lemon flavor, this lemon balm plant might be for you. It's an annual herb, popular in both fresh and dried. Um, you want to keep the flowers pinched for best production, and you want to plant them in a sunny location. Um, it does poorly in May if it's really chilly, and so we want to make sure that we have some warm temperatures for this one as well. Tribes is one of my favorite, and if you need a confidence builder, and you're not a really good avid gardener, Chives are so simple that anybody can grow them, and so you should be able to try them. Um, and it's a perennial, so it readily self seeds um, if it's not deadheaded, and of course it'll spread by the um, by the root system as well. It does. It doesn't matter what kind of soil it is; it likes full sunlight and can be container grown as well. Here we can see a nice bunch in your picture of chives. Um, and it's, a, it's an allium fam family, which is the same as onion and a garlic and those types of things. And the alliums that grow in our flower beds, those nice big round puffballs. Um, so this is a really nice plant. Um, and you know, we, we always hear sour cream. Of course, sour cream and chives and onions on our potatoes is one of the favorite dishes of this one. There's also a garlic chive. And so if you're a garlic lover, there's a garlic flavored one as well. Um, very aromatic. Um, it's white with white flowers, May through June, um, 12, to in, 12 to 15 inches, and it likes full sun as well, just like the other ones as well. Now, <coughs> we'll get into the coriander, cilantro, and Chinese par parsley. These are all the same thing. Um, those of you that like your Mexican dishes, the cilantro is something in salsa. Um, when I first had salsa with fresh cilantro, I thought, oh, I don't really like this. But you know, it kind of grows on you. Um, I really like it. Once you get, don't put too much in it first and try and get used to that different flavor and then you'll grow to like it. And then you can add more and add more. Okay, so cilantro is the plant. Um, and then, of course, it can be called Chinese parsley. And of course, when the cilantro goes to seed, it produces the coriander, which is the seed or the herb or the spice that we use, okay? Um, and um, uh, cilantro is one that we can kind of plant sporadically in the garden at different months to make sure that we have some for the entire growing season. 
I'm watching my clock, Tom. Okay. Um, and so this is the coriander, what it looks like in your in your picture. And of course, it's like a round ball seed. Um, it's quite. It's not the cheapest spice when you go buy it on the shelf. And then you can see that we have the nice leafy green vegetable. And of course, it goes with any of our Mexican dishes. Um, I make it in a use it in a fresh salsa with tomatoes, onions, green peppers, jalapeno, and some lemon juice and some pepper. And then, um, as ever, however spicy. And then I also use it in my fruit salsa as well. Um, and it adds a really unique flavor to that. And the recipes are in your handout. Dill, as I talked about, is one of my favorites. I like to pick it um, and use it in salads. I like to put it in my cucumbers. I love it on fish. And so it's um, very nice. And if you have it in your garden, it's a self-seeding annual, as many of you probably know. And so it can get naughty and be spread all over your garden. And But you can pull it out. Don't be afraid to pull it out. It'll come back and reseed. Um, and then uh, the best thing is that to pick these leafy, ferny, the branches really early in your season. Um, you can lay it out in a baking sheet and lay it out in the sun, and it'll do really nicely as far as drying is concerned. And of course, everybody knows that we use it in our pickles, our dill pickles. That's the best spice for our dill pickles, along with some garlic and some other things that we have in our recipes. Let's make sure, of course, I'm not going to get into a canning food preservation thing, but make sure that they're processed correctly. And garlic is another one that is uh, quite uh, popular. It's gained as far as a health food. Um, and then we can buy it fresh. We can buy it many times in, like, our big box stores, of course, carry it in big jars. Um, for us to do well, to do well, of course, we have to plant it in the fall of the year. I have a neighbor lady that is really into garlic, and she plants it in the fall of the year, and she sells numerous garlic um, plants or uh, produce um, every year um, in her in, at her our market garden in Mandan, and she does really well with garlic, and she really likes it. Curly parsley. There's several different types of parsley's. And we always see this um, basically in when we go to eat to a restaurant, they'll add this as a garnish. Um, they say that you should use it as like a breast freshener after you're done eating. Um, it's very decorative and adds ambiance to your dinner plate. And most of the time it is used in salads or as a garnish. Okay, sage. Esther talked about this last night. She talked quite a bit about sage. And, and she talked about what the different colors were. There, she had a variegated picture. Um, I've had grown in my garden. I've had it as a purple, purple and green color, which is very pretty and adds a lot of um, texture and variation in the garden. And then um, I've also had the dark green. And so check your local garden centers what's available. Sage is usually a perennial and will live for several years in the garden. And so if you like it in meat, um, of course, we use it in our bread, our stuffing for turkey. Um, I don't hardly put any in because I'm not a sage lover, but um, it really adds a lot of good flavor as well. I really like tarragon. That's one of my favorite herbs. Um, and I like to use tarragon in a lot of my soups, especially the ones with the cream base. So if I, use, I make um, chicken and wild rice, and potato soup, I like tarragon in those, especially those types of soups. Um, they, they see it really adds, it's a, it's a sweet herb. I find it to be sweeter than a lot of our other ones. Um, and it can be a perennial, um, but there's a, two varieties. There's a Russian and the French. And um, the Russian is the one that's probably, it goes to be about six feet tall, I believe. And then the, the French is a little bit shorter. And so you want to um, try and figure out which one you would prefer in your garden or in your landscape. And so tarragon is another one of my favorites. Um, French tarragon is usually hardy in zone four if it's giving, given some um, winter protection. And so those of us that, I don't know about Fargo, I'm not real sure, Todd, will you? OK. OK. Yeah, so it needs protection, but since 
we're usually warmer in Mandan than it is here in Fargo, so it'll probably do okay out more in the western part of the state. And rosemary is another one. I cook a lot of lamb, and so I like it in my, some in my meat. It's beef, it tastes really well. Pork and lamb, I like rosemary. Now there's people that don't like it. Um, rosemary is kind of, it looks like kind of like an evergreen type thing. It's got like little needle-like leaves, as you can see in the picture. Um, and it can be kind of um, strong for some people, um, but just don't put so much on, and then you know you'll probably like it a little bit better. Um, rosemary also can be grown inside the home, and then I've also seen it pruned and um, decorated um, for those of you that like it for Christmas and don't have a Christmas tree. I've seen it decorated in Denver. At, um, we were at a garden center. Um, in the fall of the year, and they had them all decorated and pruned up like a Christmas tree and decorated. And so it can be used as an ornamental for Christmas time as well, if you like rosemary. And Esther talked a lot about thyme, and she especially talked about this lemon one right here. And if you like that lemony flavor um, on fish, um, in your teas, um, it's one that will do really well for you and really will add a lot of nice uh, uh, flavor to your dishes. Okay, oregano, and of course we all know we like to have that on our pizza. Um, my husband and I, we used to own a pizza and a beer restaurant when we lived in Bowman, and so I got to experiment with a lot of these herbs when, we, um, when, I, when I got to help cook at the kitchen, um, and so we would add, and we had, we had a hard time finding a good sauce, and so we experimented trying to add our own um, herbs so that we would get our sauce to taste just right. And so oregano, um, and it really makes a really nice decorative plant. As you can see, the leaves also are kind of like hairy and fuzzy, much like marjoram, which is um, has an oregano-like flavor. It's also got a fuzzy type leaf, um, very delicate type. Um, Marjoram prefers well-drained soil um, and room to spread. Um, and you can cut this back if it gets woody on you and it'll regrow. And so it's kind of like your lilacs if you want to just get them to regrow for you. Fennel, I tried fennel for the first time um, last year. Um, I, 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 got, I have one of those uh, memberships in a, a vegetable basket type um, thing and I, there was fennel in there and everybody when I went to pick it up Everybody was asking, what is this? You know, and so I had a neighbor that had it in her garden when I was li when I lived in Bowman. Um, this one is can grow very, very tall, five to eight feet. And she had it right on the corner, right inside by her porch as she walked in her house. Um, it resembles dill, resembles dill when it's growing up. Um, and it can cross pollinate with dill, and so you want to make sure that you keep it probably separated. Um, and it's good in French and Italian cuisines and sauces for fish and in mayonnaise. Spearmint, this is one of the naughtiest plants that you can put into your yard, and so I wouldn't recommend it. Um, it's one that just kind of takes away on you. Um, it has a matted creeping root system, sends up erect square stems for about, about two feet high. But if you like spearmint and want to use it in many of your cooking or in your teas, um, it can be used as well. Chamomile, my mom used this when we were growing up as kids, and we used it in tea. We made it as tea. And we put some honey in it, and when we had a bad cold, that's what she would feed us. And that was supposed to help us get better sooner. And so you can grow herbs in many different sizes, shapes, and locations. Um, and, you know, this here it shows that you should probably mark them so that you keep um, straight what they are. Um, and then you can put... Uh, put some of them in containers, protect them so that they will live longer in your garden um, throughout our early springs. I mean, our, and our, frost, our, our springs are not always frost-free as our falls are kind of chilly sometimes too. And so we've had frost in Mandan in June, and so you might want to protect some of those tender ones. And like I said, a reminder is that 
make sure you don't put your base below out before it, to, before it warms up. And I took a lot of the information out of the Herbs from Garden um, sub publication, which is available, and many of you have it. And then um, some stuff from um, University of Minnesota and things like that. And then um, the, the recipes that you have, many of them I've tried and used in many um, different um, uh, presentations that I've had. And so um, yeah, I think you'll enjoy them and just kind of vary, vary, your, um, vary your dishes and your herbs so that you can get different flavors and tastes to get rid of some of that salt and sodium um, that we don't really need in our diet, those of us that are on high blood pressure medication. <laughs> so if there are any questions. Okay, Jackie, we got some questions out there. And keep them coming, everybody. First of all, let's talk about chives. Can you eat the flowers on the chives or just the stems? <laughs> I, Some sure, why not? Sure, why not? Yes, They're, they should be. It's an allium. Yep. Yep, it's an allium, so they should be very edible. Um, how about, uh, what, what are some uses for lemon balm? Can you, go, can you grow a lemon balm in North Dakota? Well, we can grow it here as an annual. It won't grow, um, it won't stay as a perennial over the winter. And of course, anything with a lemon balm, lemon, of course, fish, is an excellent um, dish that we could put in our lemon, left for lemon balm. We could use it in teas. Um, um, I've used lemon also when I've cooked lamb and used lemon rind and actually slices of lemon. And you would also be able to use lemon balm in with lamb. Um, I'm sure that a lot of people are just kind of looking at me in the audience like lamb. It's just kind of a dirty word. It's and a four-letter word. It's a four-letter word, yes. Be careful. And you know... <laughs> But if you cook it correctly, and if you have questions on cooking lamb, I can help you with that. But it's, it's a very delicious meat. You just have to make sure you cook it right. And so it's fun. How about, uh, is there a best time of the day to harvest your herbs? Okay, you should harvest your herbs earlier in the morning um, because that's when they will be the most flavorful. We also want to make sure we harvest them before they bolt or get blossoms. Or if they do get blossoms, you want to pinch those off. And if you pinch them off or pinch that plant back, of course, it's going to get more robust, more bushy, and that sort of type of thing so that it, it, it'll look nicer in your garden as well. How about, have you ever started herbs from seed? I have not. I usually, I, I do. Wow. I don't because I don't have the window space to use um some of them are easy, like I've made, I've, I've done borage, I guess I shouldn't say I have not, because I've had borage in my garden, very simple to grow, um, you can grow it from seed, and of course dill is the one that you can easily grow from seed. Um, cilantro? And cilantro, yes, easily. Those three are very, very easy. Yes, yeah, sure, why not, give them a try, huh? Yes. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, have you ever infused herbs in any oils? No, I have not. Okay. Have you, Tom? Uh, I'm not an infused type of guy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, I like, you know, when, maybe you, when, you, when you go to some of these restaurants, <laughs> sometimes you get herbs, especially garlic, in some of these oils, and it really tastes pretty good. Well, you like garlic. You're a pizza parlor yeah. owner, so yeah. there you go. What do you expect? <laughs> How about... Jack, have you ever heard of, of course you have, but what is borage? What is that thing? What is it? It is an herb. Um, it all, it? It's a, a green plant. I think um, Esther talked about it last night quite a bit. It's got a, it doesn't get very tall, about 12 inches, and then it shoots out a flower that's purple, and it's very easy to grow, and you put it in your garden to attract pollinators. And so if you have issues with pollinators, um, for your cucumbers, squash, that sort of type of thing, plant some borage and that will really help you out. It can get a little naughty because it self-seeds, but just pull it out, give some to a friend. Okay, that's way, it's way to be friendly, that's yes. nice. It's, how about, um, are there some chives that don't have flowers? Is there any difference using this? Oh, here, are there, is there a difference using 
for chives, is there a difference using chives with um, the stems with flowers versus the stems without flowers? Okay, anytime you let an herb go to flower, the plant itself will be less flavorful, Tom. And so, okay, makes sense. And so once it starts to reproduce seed, it loses flavor. It's trying to reproduce. I see. Um, here's a comment from Norma out there. A good way to dry herbs is to put herb leaves on a tray, then turn on the oven light, place the tray near the top of the oven, and leave overnight. That might how work. About that? It might be warm enough in there. there yes, that go. probably will work. Thank you, Norma. Um, how about uh, do herbs grow well in containers? Some of them do. Some of them don't do so well. Um, and if they have enough sun, they will do just fine. And of course, you're going to have to pinch them back. And then you're also going to have to make sure that they are correctly fertilized. Because if you are picking all the time and harvesting them, you will need to, uh, to fertilize them to make sure that they come back as a robust plant or keep growing um, in a container. Have you ever tried um, chocolate mint? No, I haven't. It's highly recommended okay. for children. How about, have you ever tried lemon verbena or lemon basil? Yes. Lemon basil I really like. Yeah. Awesome. You can just pick it off at the, and chew on it. It's good. Chew on it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. As I say, I get high on that kind of stuff. I just <laughs> love it. It's, it's a nice break in the garden. You just, when you're pulling yeah. weeds and you just need a break, just go over to the basil patch and very refreshing. Just a little in your nose. Yep. It's legal. <laughs> yeah, it's legal. <laughs> <laughs>